What is up, Mintes? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of these Marvel monograph books. These are the art books, artist specific, put out by Marvel. So please stay tuned. Okay, now let's get this started. Uh, the first thing I want to do is measure these. No, actually, the first thing I want to do while I get my tape measure out is thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending me these advanced copies. Actually, all these are out by now. Uh, so let's do a little bit of measuring here. We are looking at eight and a half inches long and almost 11 inches long. Of course, that doesn't mean much to people outside of the U.S. So here it is compared to the size of a trade paperback. So you can see it's longer and taller. Each one of these retails for $19.99. And they each have a little over 100 to 110 pages each. The paper quality is this thick, glossy paper. Uh, think of the early days of the Omnis when they first came out. That's the kind of paper they're using on these. Uh, there's also, let me see if there's a table of content. I want to say that okay we're looking at the Adi Granoff one and yeah there's an introduction of Adi Granoff and who he was or is sorry he is still living and how he came to be at Marvel what his first works were and it almost feels like reading a poster book and then within uh, these pages here like he kind of introduces like what he was doing this is when he was working with Warren Ellis on the extremists which is about to come out in a Marvel Select format. It's one of the best, if not the best, Iron Man story. But hey, that's all subjective. What I do want to point out, this is hard to do an overview of because we're looking at an art book, really. So as I'm glancing through the pages, maybe I'll talk just a little bit. Or I, could, I guess I could shut up and just uh, flip through the pages. But then what would be the point of that? Maybe? I don't know. I'm just rambling now. Uh, this is his work during Spider-Man, during uh, the Spider-Verse stuff that he was doing. He is an amazing artist, and he has done some internal work. However, he is such an amazing artist that he takes his time. These are the covers to Nova, the ongoing series by DNA. I love his stuff, and I remember somebody commenting many years ago when these were coming out, why can't they get the guy that draws the covers to draw the internal artwork? I assume that's what that guy sounded like, like an angry dude. And that's because he takes his time with art. Part of the reason why Iron Man the Extremist took a long time for that book to come out was because it took him a long time to draw internal artwork and sequential art. It's a lot different than drawing covers. So the man just mainly sticks to covers right now. There are some statues that are... Oh my gosh, he draws an amazing Black Widow. Sorry about that. Woo! And an Electra. All right. Where was I? Hold on. Oh, yes, 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 this is, I love, this is a good crossover anyway. Man, I lost my train of thought. Oh, some statues. That's right. There are uh, X-Men statues and Avenger statues based on his or artwork. As a matter of fact, based on these character designs that he did here for X-Men and Avengers. I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, but he does some amazing stuff. And he is still doing covers at Marvel. Variant covers and, oh, yeah, this is the one that has a variant of the scrolls, I think. Bam! That old memory. Still got it. Oh, yeah. The guy draws some kick-ass Iron Man armor. My goodness. And I want to say he did some designs for the movie, too. Uh, that would be more up my cousin, the amazing Amanda Alley, but maybe when she comes back to the channel one day. Um, but anyway, that's this book. Let's look at the other ones real quick. These are all the same dimensions. Now we are looking at the art of Jeffrey Scott Campbell. By the way, I didn't bother showing the spine of that one. All the spines are different co covers or colors. And here's the back, brought to you by the Marvel Pop Art Department. I really like this one. This is the one that I kept flipping through. These make really good coffee table books. I kept that actually. I got this in about a couple of weeks ago, and my brothers were flipping through it. And because they they don't read comics anymore, but they do remember when Jeffrey Scott Campbell took over uh, the covers to Amazing Spider-Man when he was drawing Gen 13 is what put him on the map. But some of you may or may not remember this. The first time I ever saw his name was when he won a contest on Nintendo Power magazine. I don't know if you all remember that or not. He designed a video game or character designs for a video game, and that kind of put his name out there. 
And then, yes, when he was, I think, I want to say he was 18, 19, he started drawing Gen 13. And now the man just sticks to doing covers because, good God, I think he has a variant cover every month. If not every month, every other month. No, not even, no, 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 I'm right. I think it's every month. Like, more like every week he has a different cover, a different variant cover. I love his uh, Spider-Man, Mary Jane, and uh, Black Cat. As a matter of fact, there are statues of those characters uh, that he's designed. Uh, black cat not designed but yeah like i think that's one of the statues there's a statue that he did of gwen stacy and there's one of mary jane where she's sitting down drinking this one right here this yes ridiculous pose i don't care still works still gorgeous look at those cute freckles uh, there's captain marvel moon knight i think my, one of my favorite things that they did with this is here in the front back cover and the back back cover it's the exact same image, but they're sketches. I wish we actually had more sketches. I know Humberto Ramos has some. Adi Granoff's book has some from time to time, but I, I would have taken a whole book of sketches because that's one of my favorite parts of looking at the artists and behind the scenes is how something like this, you know, that starts out like this, turns out into something like this. One of my favorite things. Let me know in the comments down below if you're also a fan of art books. I have many. I have a lot of anime and video game art books. And then I've got like the art of Joe Quesada, the art of Jim Lee, the art of Alex Ross and things like that. So let me know in the comments down below. And let's just flip a little more through here. Never was the biggest fan of his Wolverine, but you know, to each their own. I've always liked that cover. And I remember, I want to say that this is one of the most expensive variants that came out. This is uh, the cover to Wolverine number one variant. More Wolvie. Oh, I do like some of his X-Men, like his X-Ladies. When he went through different covers. By the way, this is the art of Jeffrey Scott Campbell, Volume One. That's what this is called, the Complete Covers, Volume One. Uh, also, the Addy Granov, I forgot to mention that, is also a Volume One. So we'll probably get more of that. Now let's look at the last one, and this is Umberto Ramos, the art of Umberto Ramos. But unlike the others, this is just Spider-Man. Now Umberto Ramos was a guy that got his start. Um, where was he? DC. He was working on Impulse. And I want to say he was a young guy when he did that. And then, actually, he tells his stories here. And worked his way into DC Comics in 1995 with Mark Waid on Impulse. And then 2000 and 2001 is when he got over at Marvel. But before that, he did something called X-Nation at Marvel, which was a very short-lived uh, series. It was X-Nation 2099. So it was one of those 2099 series. It was before the whole thing just kind of crumbled and fell apart. But now they're coming back. So who knows? We might see that in a collection one day. But if you notice, like, this is when he came back into Spider-Man. And see, there I was rambling again. Um, his art style was very anime-ish. Let me look down. Let me see if I can find a Peter Parker from his early days drawing Spider-Man. There's people that love it and there are people that hate it. I think his art fits the character of Spider-Man. It's this over-exaggerated poses that he puts on Spider-Man. It works for the character. He has a very anime-looking style to his art, but it's mixed with some good cross-hatching and just some good details, I, I think. So for me, the artwork has always worked. I wasn't the biggest fan of his Wolverine run, but that was because I don't think his art really fit that style. But when he was drawing new X-Men and then when he came back to do this Spider-Man, I was in. I loved it. Oh, here he is drawing, yeah, this version of Venom. This is the Rick Remender version of Venom with Flash Thompson as Venom. That's some kick-ass internal artwork. And that's another thing. The guy can carry a monthly book. He is freaking quick. Oh, okay, so they're separating them by characters. Here's this black cat and the many, many different outfits of Spider-Man. Some covers and some internal artwork, some pinups, posters, and the team-ups. Yeah, it's Wolverine. I don't know. I don't know. I never liked it. It's it's too cartoony. Maybe I'm just picky about who draws uh, my Wolverine character. But here's some Spider Island internal artwork. Like I said, the man can pump out some art. And some pages that went uninked. Oh yeah, Superior Spider-Man. Some of the best comic books that Dan Slott wrote in Spider-Man. And for some reason, I don't know, Marvel didn't do an omnibus of it. And then we had, now we have three out of print uh, oversized hardcovers that make up the entire run. With the exception of the Spider-Verse stuff. So, yeah, man, it's, his art style has, and believe it or not, 
it's actually gradually progressed. Like, you can kind of tell from when he started, when he was doing Paul Jenkins' Spectacular Spider-Man, till now. Coming home. Yeah, there's something. See, he is still drawing Spider-Man from time to time. There's the Red Goblin Saga. There's the uncolored variant covers put together. Now, this one doesn't have a volume number, but I guess everything they did with Spider-Man is here. Maybe they'll release a volume two when he's done another 20 years of drawing Spider-Man. And here's all three of them. And as you could probably tell, these are all soft cover. Hence the price range of $19.99 for retail. Um, so I don't think these are coming out in a hard cover edition. So this is what they are right now. Here's a closer look at the spines. Marble monograph up here. The art of, like I said, volume one, volume one. And that's it. And then, of course, the Marvel logo up there, right on top of the monograph. And that's what those books look like. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking them up or you plan on picking one up. And which one you're picking up. Which artists are you interested in? What other artists would you like to see that have done Marvel characters in the past, whether they were pinups, covers, or internal work? Let me know in those comments down below. Again, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't yet. And if you enjoy the content of this channel, please think about supporting the channel through Patreon. All those details are in the description of the video. Again, thank you very much for watching. This was the Uncanny Omar, and remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.